Hi, everybody. This is your boy, Nicovelli TV. As we all know, I told y'all I got a surprise guest coming. It's going to be crazy. And I'm letting y'all know it ain't who y'all think it is. It ain't my beloved interviewers when I speak it at a G5. It ain't the predicate. It's no other than my boy. It's been a long time coming. How y'all doing? Mr. Kevin Williams Let's on Real up. Talk with Nick. How's everybody? How you been, sir? I've been great. I've been trying to get myself in shape. Where you been hiding at, my man? I've been hiding in plain sight. Bro, Best place to hide. Place we ain't hide. seen you since the disappointing <laughs> series between the Indiana Pacers and the New York Knicks, man. Well, I was really hurt. And then I, my boy, the golden child, got hurt. So I was kind of hurt behind that. You know, I, you know it, was, it was, I wanted a healing process because we got to heal up. Okay. So hopefully everybody's healed up. I'm healed up from that, you know, devastating loss. But I'm still proud of my Knicks. So can we get, can we piggyback on the past, man? Because my viewers been asking, man, about your take concerning the Indiana Pacers versus the New York Knicks. What went wrong, my brother? In your we eyes, got burned out. Man. We didn't have enough players. See, what the, what the coach on the Indiana Pacers kept doing was rotating a new five and kept bringing fresh guys, in. and we got injured and depleted, so we only had like seven guys. So, you know, we just they just had more men than we did, and they wore us out in the series. It got physical, like I said. And I told you before, people was going to get injured, and people got injured. So you don't blame that on Tom Dibber, though? Of course I do, but, you know, they don't seem to see that. And I'm not going to really be getting on them like that no more because this is what y'all want. He has a propensity to burn out players, man. So you know, let's just hope that we deep enough that he don't do that this year. Okay. So with the new signing of Mikel Bridges, being the addition, when, oh boy. when we speak it out of the Wildcat, Vinanola, what can we expect? Well, I think that that's the, the shooter, the, the wing guy that we needed that can come in and get 20. Now, we got three or four guys that can score 20 now, so we got we got, we got got options. So that could, like, kind of give Jalen Brunson a little bit more uh, opportunity to get more assists as opposed to him looking to shoot for a shot. He got weapons around him that he trusts that he can get the ball to they'll be able to put the ball in the hole. I just hope Dante DiVincenzo, if he's coming off the bench. Yeah, him and Josh Hart's going to be coming off the bench. Right. I want them to come off and play the same way that they did. You know, uh, focus on the defensive end first to get them loose, to be able to you know, get into the offense as well. They're great defenders, man. And Dante's a great shooter. I, like, you know, I really like him. So hopefully he'll start. You know, now let me ask you this. Why wouldn't it be wise for... Josh Hart to start and have Julius Randle come off the bench. You know, I don't know. They, I, you know, like that's a coach's decision, Nick. And I, you know, I'm not in a position to kind of make that decision. But looking at it, looking at it, when you look at it, you know, they're good with Randle. You know, like with Randle there. You know, now Randle's 100. percent We're gonna be good. We need him if we're going to be able to win the championship. That's re that's really reality. You can't take a foundational player who y'all built around all these years, even though y'all making a transition to build around somebody else, he's still there and he still can play. So if he's 100%, let's utilize him as best of our ability because that's an added piece. So, and I don't, I'm not all for trading him away. I'll trade him for Giannis or get rid of him and, 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 and give him like some first round picks to bring in a. Uh, 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 John Durman or one of them, Jalen Durman, the, the, the center from Detroit. So like what can a healthy Nick, when we speak it out of Julius Randle, bring to the table? Deal, I wouldn't trade him. Okay, so let, we don't trade Julius, right? Uh, yeah. Julius Randle comes to Madison Square Garden looking 100%. He's healthy. What attributes can he bring to the New York Knicks? He's going to bring us the Eastern Conference final ship, man. We had Julius Randle. Hey, listen, man, we had Julius Randle, man. We would have got to the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm sure of that. My problem is, like, yo, Thibodeau, man, when you get them 30-point leads, man, pull your starters out, man. That's my only thing with him, man. Like, yo, I, you know, as far as what he did last season, let's give Thibodeau credit, man. You know, we came in second in the East. Now, remember what I said. When you see us winning the East, 
know we getting ready to win the championship, man. We right there. We on the cusp of winning the East, man. We right there. So I'm I'm real optimistic. Uh, like I said, I'm rolling with the Golden Child. Running with the Golden I'm Child. With the golden Speaking child. of the Golden Child, yeah. man. He got the skipper hat, man. That's right. Congratulations. It's been, you know, like, I, to me, he was leading the team anyway. So, I mean, it, giving him the title only makes everybody else aware of it. Now, do you think it was politics concerning yeah. that skipper hat when we speak of that and become a captain? Yeah, do you think, think they gave him that because he was willing to take money off the table and they feel he got the best interest at heart? Or do you think it was the skill set that earned him that I hat? I got to give Jalen Brunson a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of respect for him taking less money. But Jalen Brunson wants to win. And I've been telling people that. I said, this boy was born to bring us a championship. And he's now making the sacrifices right in front of us. So he's doing that so we can bring the pieces in for him to, to win. Now, Thibodeau, you got at least 11, 12 good guys, man. You shouldn't be going 7, 8 deep. You should be 10, you know, 10, 11, maybe 10. But you shouldn't be going 7 and 8 and doing that. You know, and I'm looking forward to Deuce, Deuce McBride making that, that 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 transition from a utility player to a superstar. This is his time to shine. Now, speaking of Deuce, right? All eyes is on Deuce. But some Nick fans is fearing that he might have to take a back seat to this new point guard we saw during the Are draft. Are you serious, man? Talk Deuce to ain't me. taking no back seat to nobody, man. Listen, man, Deuce already been there, and he got the coaches uh, – I said, I said he got the coach's favor, and he's already proven himself in in, in, in the um in the trenches, man, in the fire, man. He he came through. So for you to just say, okay, we're gonna disregard that and bring some new dude in there, you know, who ain't even prove himself. So you look at summer league and all that, yeah, that ain't the that ain't the that ain't the veterans camp. So it's a whole different leap from summer league to veterans camp, and you'll see that when you see how. These guys that were starting the better in the in the summer league, and they got in the veterans camp, they look like regular players. But now you have to make that you know that that transition. That's not easy. So you don't think Deuce have anything to worry about? Nah, not at all. All I want Deuce to do is make that transition. It's gonna be log jam because they done brought a whole bunch of wing players in. But like I said, as far as him being a backup point guard and a defender, hey yo, that's that's constant. We need that. Okay. Now, with DiVincenzo and Josh Hart being played in the second unit this upcoming season, do you think that brings somewhat depth yeah. off the bench? And they play good together. So now, with them two leading the second unit, that's what I'm talking about. That's the playoffs. When you got a bench with those type of guys coming in, you just put Precious and fill in a couple of other role players that can really play, and we don't lose nothing while our, while our uh, starters are getting rest. Matter of fact, with them out there and with Dante on fire, we could take it to that next level. And that's what I'm looking forward to, how uh, Thibodeau makes that transition to that 7-8 rotation to 10 and how he allocates minutes. It can be done, man. I've seen it and it's successful, too. Now, speaking of the center, there's somewhat a vacancy. You got to get a center, man. You got to get a center because right now, Mitch is at the crossroads, man. Will we I mean, speak Mitch, of him I as a future Nick? I think we should get a young guy like Jalen Jalen Jordan and let him play the center and then bring Mitch in in those situations. Because if you know the way Thibodeau plays minutes, you give minutes, Mitch, Mitch more than likely will get hurt. You think so? He's been hurt every year, man. That's true. But so is it safe to say, right? To give Mitch the benefit of the Mitch doubt. Robinson. To give Mitch the benefit of the doubt, man, Joel Embiid was the cause of his last injury. So now yeah, we... man, that, you know, like, what Joel did, man, like, yo, man, you know, I'm still mad at him, man. Hey, yo, Joel, you ain't shit, man. You was selling out even too when they played South Sudan. You was really, you know, like, point shaped. I don't know if they must have gave you a tribal woman or something. I don't know what happened. But that game, you looked at real shaky there, dude, the whole time. So... Why he ain't he ain't somebody out. He don't got that fire I like, man, out of the center, man. He ain't like Shaq. You no know Shaq came to play, you know, different, different whole different mindset. Okay. The pampered baby the way he play. Okay. So you wouldn't want him on the Knicks? Oh hell no. Nah. I want um the center on Dallas. I want him. 
Blake, uh, Blake Lively. I want him mobile, can shoot, and he'll dunk on anybody there. And he's a mobile center. Just me is what I want. You know, what I want, the Knicks don't want. So that's just me. As far as having that center, young, durable, and can run the floor, and can finish plays, and can rebound and block shots. Not as well as Mitch, but just as good. He's a better scorer than Mitch, too. Now, I want to talk yeah, about the probably. forgotten Nick, man. We seem not to talk about this kid a lot. But this kid is looking to get his just due. That of Jericho Sims, man. Right. Can Jericho Sims, man, fill the void Nick fans are starting to get a glimpse of concerning Mitch Robinson? Can he be the go-to guy to say, okay, exit Mitch into Jericho, man? I think what Jericho been with the Knicks, what, three seasons now? Yeah, four, yeah. Three, four? I, I wish him the best. I just don't keep getting injured, too. So, so if he comes in, I believe it. He comes in and not get injured, he'll be a real asset at the power forward position or the center, backup center. I mean, we deep, man. You know, like, if we get that backup center, Jalen Bruin, they want to pull the trick on Julius Randle, listening to Win Wind Horace and them dudes talking about he's available and all that. Man, listen, I'm going to tell you straight up. That owner <laughs> ain't getting rid of Julius Randle. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. James Dolan is not getting rid of Julius Randle. He would have been did it. He would have been done it. Okay, now, he got an option next year for $31 million. If he does good this year, which I believe he will, if Thibodeau just take them out when they get these big leads, I mean, you don't never know with him. So, I, you know, if he just take them out, put them young dudes in, you got 12 good dudes. So it's no reason for your top players to be on the floor when y'all got big leads. It's, it's no way. So if you do that, because you got a propensity to do that, know it's going to be an injury going to occur somewhere down the line. Because he's not, how do they say it? He's not saving his players for the playoff. Low management. He's not doing it. Got to do that. Define low management, man. Low management is when you take days, games off and prepare your other your, your, your starters for the playoff. In other words, you're managing the load so that you don't you don't lose any of your load. That's what low management is. So you got 12 players, you want to manage it to keep all 12 players. Okay? And if you're not low managing, right, like Thibodeau don't do, you'll get down to only Deuce McBride, who was the only one who wasn't injured. Am I lying? No, you're not. Okay, so everybody got injured because this dude plays our players like Apaches. You know, go out there, and if you come back, we'll give you something to eat. If you don't, that's okay. We'll do a memorial for you. But, you know, you got to be able to save your players, Tipito. You know, that's my only knock on you. Okay. Now, when we speak about the Knicks' past success, right? Yeah. Because we was playoff contenders. From where the Knicks came from to from where we at now, when we fill in the void from that of Red Hoseman, going through the painful years with Patrick Ewing, Pat Rowley. Now we in the era of Tom Dibbledo. Past season, Knicks, was it luck? I would say it was Jalen Brunson just taking the NBA by storm. I mean, when he was playing, man. I mean, if you play with a point guard playing like that, it's easy. I play with point guards like that. Man, keep your hands up and play defense, man. Help him out as best I can. When he penetrates, I gotta back, I gotta run to the back and watch his back. As the two guard watching a point guard like that. Every time he drives, I gotta just take off and watch his back so nobody gets fast breaks on him. You know, like little things like that. You know, just so are you we, saying we all do that? Unc, are you saying it wasn't luck then? You nah, saying it was skill, man. You don't see Jalen Brunson how skilled he is, man. Like yo, that are man. He's the coach. So now if you got a great coach who could play like him, oh, no, no, man, we going to be successful. That's why I said Jalen Brunson going to be successful. And this year, if this man Thibodeau rotate these players right, yo, man, y'all going to be having one of these, man. Not exactly like that, but y'all going to have one. Y'all going to have a ring. And when we speak of that of Jalen Brunson, we see yeah. what we what he had to do. Yeah, he's good. To, to get the respect. 
Yeah, he got my respect. Okay, he got the respect from the fans. Yeah. But you know who he still hasn't gotten respect from? Who? The refs. No, well, you know, listen, man, that's, let me say this. <laughs> that got a lot to do with the owner, man. What the it's refs, what the owner got to do with the refs, because man? Because he's a, he's a piece of fecal matter, man. I'm trying to be congenial here. But he, he's really a terrible person. Okay, and then But why would like the ref him. blow the whistle? Because they don't like him. And then he's like, say, okay, you the owner, and you done pissed the, 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 the business organization off. And they want to stick it to you. Oh, no, they know how to do it, man. I'm telling you. So, you know, like, and he tells, you know, he gives them that, he gives them his ass to kiss. I'm talking about the NBA guys, man. So he's not like, man. I'm telling the truth. He's not like, man. So, you know, and he got a sexual assault charge on him now. I don't even know what happened to that. It must have disappeared because, you know, when you got billions and women accuse you of raping them, you got enough millions to make it go away, which is James Dolan Forte. He got enough money to make a whole lot of problems go away, like magical spiritual balls and shit like that. So you sitting here standing with Real Talk with Nick telling me that the reason why the New York Knicks don't get the calls they should get is because of James Dolan. Say it again. Say it again. That that's what it is. Now you look at you look at Golden State. Let's just take a let's just take an example of the teams that the NBA likes because they generated so much. You can't do. You would not be doing how Indiana was playing. Uh, my man Jalen Brunson wouldn't have been doing that to Stephon Curry. Every time they would have tried to hit him, that whistle would have blew. I'm telling you. All right? I'm talking about game game four when Jalen had his hurt his ankle and they were beating him up all the whole game. Nah, it wouldn't have happened if that was Steph. That's a direct reflection of what I'm talking about. How they just allowed that. You know, and he got hurt. He was hurt. That game we almost won. The dude hit the three. Remember the dude threw the three ball out his ass. He lost that game, but Jalen Brunson came back the next game. Hit forty something. So. Okay, no, so how can we turn that around then, man? Because if it because if it's no, going, I just want to see how he assembled his team. We did. So you know we going to the championship. It's like right there for us, man. And it's in Jalen Brunson's hands, which is the best hands it could be in. So we should all be optimistic. Man. This ain't no, oh, well, we going to make the, no, nigga, we going to make the playoffs. We going to the championship. We going to Eastern Conference Finals. Now, Thibodeau, you got to figure out, go somewhere, get some sort of psychotherapy to teach you how to play 10 guys because you don't seem to do that. But you got to do that, especially with Julius Randle and, and um, Jalen Brunson getting older now, Okay. Now, you know, like I said, one piece is missing. Donovan Mitchell. You still want Donovan and Mitchell? Oh, no, no. He ain't coming here, man. To he replace who? Up. I don't know, <laughs> but he coming here. Don't ask me how I know, but Donovan Mitchell going to be here, man. Think I'm playing. Why? The Knicks have a propensity to mess up loopholes and cause things that, you know, they just have a propensity to do this. Right now, we sat, we sat now. But just imagine if we had Donovan Mitchell instead of that other point guard we had from um, from Phoenix. No, shooter, shooter. He got he got left-handed point guard in the back. Uh, David I'm talking about we really deep this year. So. Right. Damn. So you still on the Donovan Mitchell coming to New York? Yeah, he coming. Here. Okay. But will he fit? Will he be a good you know, fit? Like, you know, like with me, I always say this. God forbid Jalen Brunson, if he get hurt, and he could get hurt. If Jalen Brunson get hurt, Donovan Mitchell will be here. Serious. Now that new kid, Tyler. Kolek? Kolek Tyler. Yeah, he looks good in the summer league. He don't have no ex NBA experience. He has to develop. And then it's not even going to be any kind of co competition with Deuce McBride. Deuce McBride is going in his fourth or fifth year. No way no rookie going to be performing. Nah. You know, they, that's them doing that. You know, like the you know, news and the publications trying to, you know, get the boys some minutes. But you ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't ready for this yet. So you don't Deuce think McBride no way. has been battle tested. It's a difference. 
But some people just got a, a, a IQ for the game that yeah, others so don't. You have IQ for the game. You ain't got the skill and the will for it. Your IQ. Of the guy guarding, you got an IQ too and a skill and the will to stop you. So it's a war of attrition out there, man. It comes down to a lot of other things beyond just your IQ. It comes down to your heart. It comes down to your will. You know? won't be broken, man, because you can get broken out there playing in that type of a hostile environment. Okay, now watching Tyler, Colette, Tyler, right? What would you say to us concerning his game that you say, okay, it's, he, he got some. When I see, it's like when I watch Bronny James. It's like watching a college game. You know, like it's a difference. The intensity, the skill set, all that's different when you get into the veterans camp. Okay. Now, say that guy, Tyler Colick, has a Patrick Beverly dog in his ass the whole fucking game. I would like to see that and see if you can handle that type of pressure for you to say, oh, he can deal with a Deuce McBride. All right? Because Deuce will put that pressure on him, too. So, you know, it's just that he, Deuce has a, a perspective and an and a experience level that he has to go through. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. And his intelligence quotes just gotta help him, but he's gonna have to get some physical abilities too to go along with that. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Because I'm hearing this kid Tyler is a, a, a pass first kind of point guard, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, like you know, it's off a bit, Knicks, son. I don't think the Knicks need a pass first point guard with all the sco- all the scorers they got. They need another scorer. They need as many points as they can get because. They're going to play defense, and sometimes they go through scoring drought. And sometimes Jalen Brunson don't get the help he needs. So now with, with, with Mikael Bridges and them there, and he puts the, juggles these combinations and puts the flamethrower out there with all of them, we can, we can be quite lethal. It's a matter if Thibodeau uses, you know, combinations and changes, you know, the lineup up, because he got enough pieces to do that. Now, OG and an OB. Love OG. A healthy OG and OB. He yeah, came to us not 100%, right. even though he gave 100% under the circumstances. He's the X Factor. What does that mean, man? When we speak of his grittiness, his toughness to that's, the New York Knicks? That's just another piece that's going to help us get to Christmas time in New York City. And that's all it is. We are deep. Yeah, I ain't say that in a minute. It's Christmas time. It's Christmas time. I forgot about Christmas time. Yeah, you better remember because that time yeah. is coming. It's yeah. coming back. That's we right. got a mob, though. And, we, and listen, if we could just psychoanalyze them to take them green leprechauns down, we already got one fast leg off the elephant. Now we got to take down whoever's coming out of the West. If we put both of those pants legs on, guess what? We got one of these. Yeah, we now, got the golden child, so we got a shot. Now, you know what kind of depressed me, shot. man, this kind of offseason, man? Yeah. Watching Chris Przingis get a motherfucking ring. I'm happy for him, man. He's always going to be a Nick. Nick can't be mad because, you know, the, the management. I mean, it's how he got so it, though, man. He left. Yeah, he got it, though. He earned it. You know, you know like, yo, dude, I'm, I'm proud of him, man. I'm, you know, happy to Chris Przingis. God bless you, Chris. Play good. Man. Now, when we speak of the Knicks opening day, they play against the Boston Celtics. Looking forward to that? And what do that mean? That means that's the beginning of pain for you, Boston. We're going to put pain on you, man. I'm talking about once they get this memo, I want you Knicks to put pain on them. I'm talking about bury them, then dig the Celtics leprechauns up and kill them and bury them again because y'all didn't beat the shit out of them well enough. I mean, I want y'all to really take it personal on these things. Okay. On the Look first right. game. On the, off the rip. Because you know, like, 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 it's like going back to school. Look, it's like going back to school, man. No Boston Celtics. We want to love the Boston Celtics. We want them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then we want to flay them niggas in the playoff. So I want them all the time. With this crew right here, give me Boston every Why don't you do a doubleheader? Let's play Boston that day and another day right after that day. It just might go like Dude, that, man. Things. They just might milk it like yeah, that. Play one at the Madison and then one in their center. Yeah. 
We can do them, and we'll do all both of them if we get the right. Hey, listen, if Jalen Brunson is playing like I know he came up, well, this ain't going to be no problem. Problem is, this, is the playoff, and then the physicality takes over. And, yo, we got the golden shot. He's proven he can do it. So everybody else better show up. Okay, let's name so, players on the New York Knicks that's battle-tested when we speak of that a postseason. Precious Achua. As you think Precious Achua is battle-tested? Damn right. He should have been battle-tested more. But Talk to me. What the, makes Precious Achula battle tested? Rebounding, offensive rebounding. He's relentless off the board. Block shot, make plays in the crucial, and you sit him on the bench. I don't get that. But all right, that's the pros. The cons say that he's too small. You agree with that? No he's Mitch. Playing power forward. He's no Mitch. Six, Can nine. Precious Achula? He's six nine. He's he's the right size to play power forward. You playing him at the center? He's not a center. That's what y'all doing with Precious and Chua. And he's holding his own. So, nah, I don't I don't agree with that assessment. No, nah, not at all. Especially the limited, erratic minutes you're giving him. You're not giving him enough minutes for him to get settled into the position and then we can see him develop. Y'all not doing that. Y'all putting him in spot minutes. So, if he's on, yeah, he's going to show you some stuff. But then if he's struggling or he's playing against a more physical player, yeah, he's not going to show. Because you ain't giving him enough time to make adjustments. That's how I look at that. I shouldn't have said that. You look confused. Is that okay? No, 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 no. It's, it's been a long time, man. It's okay. I'm it's been right. a long time, man. My Nickavellians is happy man. you back Precious on the show, my brother. My boy, and I learned how to play more. And it's going to be hard because you know he's going to cater to Julius. And now we got OG, who's kind of like a. a, a okay, so you saying Precious Achula is battle tested for postseason? Yeah. Okay. OG, he's battle tested. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You ain't see the way he was playing against Indiana? Before he got hurt, oh hell yeah! I mean, against who? Or who they played first? It was before they played. It was the end. Sixers, right? Yeah, man. When they played the Sixers, man, OG and Anobi, man, that was my dude, man. I, he was doing his thing, man. Is Mikael Bridges, even though this is gonna be his first season as a Knickerbocker, do you think he's battle tested for postseason? I think Jalen Brunson will get him there. I think when you play with the guys you won championships with, it's just a, it's just getting on the court and playing the game. You know what I mean? That's all it is. It's getting on the court and playing the game. And being that him and Jalen, him and Jalen Brunson have the history, I think it'll be easy for him. You know, it'll think be it'll be easy. easy. Yeah, it'll be easy for him to make that transition. Okay. Playing with him all his life, there ain't gonna be no difference playing in the NBA with him. Deuce McBride is battle tested. Yeah like him. I'm looking for him to make that that leap. I'm looking for him to take it to the next level. And I and, and Thibodeau, you gotta give him minutes. They tell me I only giving him 15 minutes. Alright, you wanna do that. Is like the said, other guy battle tested? You know when I say the other guy, you, you should know who I'm talking Julius about. Rand. Is he battle tested? Regular season, yeah. But Pray postseason, nah. is he battle tested? Nah, 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 nah. When I, until I see that, nah. Okay, now now on the Lions then, when we speak in real talk with you. Yes, sir. Because, brother, yes. you just got through saying earlier that the Knicks ain't going to the West, the Eastern Conference without Julius Randle. Right. So how can that be possible if you're sitting here, brother, telling Nick that Julius Randle is not battle-tested when it because comes to the postseason? Because I looked at them 46 games that he played last year before he got hurt, Julius Randle was playing like a certified all-star. And I can only go off of that. I can't look at it no other way. I can only say if Julius Randle wouldn't have got hurt, we would have probably won the Eastern Conference Final the way he was playing based on his stats. That's all I can go off of. And everybody knows that. So why not keep him? Hopefully, you know, Julius heals and he can play up to that level. And if he's playing up to that level, I'll be correct in what I said in my assessment. I'm mad Thibodeau didn't take him out the game, and we all are. You got to take them out when they get them big leads like that. And we were beating the shit out of Miami. And I was, you know, like, yo. Now. It was just a nightmare. We beating the shit out of Miami. And you gonna keep, you know, I guess you wanted to rub it in. I don't know, but you got to take them out, man. Take them out when you're doing that. Now, when we speak of that, of Julius Rand with attitude, right? Some say that he gonna have to really adjust because you got the Vinanola. Knicks 
are in town, man. That's going to be Tom Thibodeau first priority as far as running this. Regardless of what? As far as running the offense. As far as running the offense. I don't see that. Yeah. How the offense going to rely on because Julius it always Randle. has. But things it, change, man. Yeah, the Knicks went almost half the season change, without him. But with Julius on the court, things going to stay the same. There's no way he's not going to be getting most of the shots. He leads the team you know, second in scoring. He was leading the team in scoring before he got injured. So, no, I'm, I'm not looking for him to not do anything other than what he does, and that's score. So you don't so, think there's going to be any conflict of interest between him and Mikhail if Bridges? If he's going to the basket like he's doing, I think that that would alleviate a lot of jump shots for a lot of other people. If he's jacking up those crazy shots like they do, he might have a problem. Depending on what Julius show up. We get that Julius last year that was bully balling, nigga. We going to the Eastern Conference Finals, man. Tell me. Because it's going to be enough shots. Now, if he can incorporate passing and cutting, you know, instead of just standing there like he be fucking doing. Like, once you don't get it, Julius, like, once you realize you have been guarded, pass it and cut it. Let somebody else come and get in there. Like a Mikel or let clear it out for Jalen or make a double screen for Dante. You got a lot of weapons out there for you not to be holding the ball and going stagnant like you. That's all. How would you play Mikael Bridges if you're the coach? Second unit or would you start him? I, I like Dante DiVincenzo. I would start Dante DiVincenzo and bring Mikael off the bench and say, listen, you the microwave. I want you to come off the bench looking to stuff. Okay? So now, being that they saying they starting Mikael Bridges, I'm telling my man, the flamethrower, I want you to come with your napalm gun on auto load. I'm talking about as soon as you come out, everything gets burnt down. Ooh, because you got to come and score. And I want you to score, Dante, because ain't nobody shooting that like that. That boy can shoot. I want him shooting the ball. So, yeah, Dante DeVincenzo, he, he, the bench, I don't care. he I averaged like 35 I, minutes in the yeah, postseason. Nah, last. I don't care. Was, boy, I was waking up people in my house. I was the flame throwing <laughs> They was like, yeah, what's going on? I said, the flamethrower was burning the place down. Yo, he was shooting that shit for real, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And, and then you he got he battle tested. So no, we got battle tested veterans. And we only gonna get better. So we should all be optimistic. And let's just hope and pray that Julius Randle come back healthy and incorporates himself into what we're doing here. Yo, man, we got shot, man. Well, we yeah. speak of of a player like the other guy, okay? Do you think he's gonna come in this season with a chip on his shoulders to shut fans up like myself? Well, with me, looking at him, what he did last season, I didn't have nothing to say. He was proving me wrong. So, you know, based on what he did last year. Is this I'm the real gonna, Kevin Williams, man? I got a clone? The, it will, it's, it's, it's been, been like six man. months, man. It's, like, you it's know, been six months yeah, since you've been on the show. Six months, we should be able to look at film and look at st stats and analytics and, and tell the truth. I mean, the Julius, 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 Julius Randle averaged about 24 points a game and almost close to 10 rebounds before he got hurt. Is this G5 on the stuff. Kevin Williams costume, man? What the fuck is going on here, man? The, you, want me, you want me to pull my phone up? Please do, because this ain't the Kevin Williams I'll I, 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 I be normally interviewing. All these not accolades all, you give it to not, the other guy, man. This is no G5, man. Truth, man. This is no, no, let me let me let me fill, William, let me fill this me. guy. I'm just telling the truth. No, no, let me see. Let me see. Listen, okay. Let's look at, let's look at, okay. Let's look at this Julius ain't Randall. G5 in the Kevin Williams costume. Can you show me I mean, Halloween is coming up, goddammit. What the fuck is going on here? Here we go. I was right. He averaged 24 points a game and 9.2 rebounds and five assists. That's an all-star right there. Before he got hurt, he only played 46 games. Show that. So now, the top. See Julius Randle's stats? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so now what are you talking about? That's that's on paper. That is all-star stats. And guess what? That's second on the team. Okay, so no, let's let's incorporate that 24 points in our offense with Jalen, with Mikel. Dante, everybody got to play a role in this championship, man. So that's, you know, and that's for Thibodeau to define these roles. That's his job. Damn. Okay. I told you I didn't really need to pull it up. 
but you know, I just want you to understand, like, you can't be, I mean, I understand your apprehension. I understand that. Cause I, I still have them there too. But let's be optimistic. And let's say, okay, this boy, we done dug in his ass, you know, enough. Maybe he might come, you know, he might, you know, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm hoping. Hope, you know what hope is? Hope is in the bottom of Pandora's box. That's the truth. Because when she closed it, everything else got out and left hope in the box. Shit. Think about that. So hopefully she'll open it up to see if she found anything and hope comes out for this boy. I mean, you sound like Kevin Williams. I am Kevin Williams. I'm, did you see the stats? It's 24 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists, not all-star stats. Are you serious, dude? That's all-star stats, man. So I got to tell the truth. I'm not going to let my personal feelings of his lack of heart in the playoffs cloud up my judgment in telling the truth. I'm going to tell the truth. Now, if we can get that Julius Randle that was playing like that and incorporate it with my boy, the Golden Child, and the rest of us, then we going to the championship, man. It's real. And we're knocking them leprechauns off. All right. So, All so, right. so, 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 that's, so that's it. a healthy Julius Randle. Yeah. We got Mikel Bridges. Yeah. We got the Golden Arms Strong. We got the Golden OG and an OG. We got Dante. Dante. We got Josh, man, nigga. We, we got Deuce. We got Precious. We got Jericho. Man, we got Mitch, nigga. We, man, what, what's wrong with you, man? There's something wrong with you, nigga. Did you, did you wake up on the wrong side of the bed this morning, sir? Uh, did Miss Nickabelly smack you or something like, by accident when she turned over? Nothing. What's, what's going on? Shit. Because <laughs> that's a mob I just named it. So now we good. All it is is let's see if Thibodeau is as good as they say he is, man. That's all. That's it. I'm not going to be talking bad about nobody. We done, we done made enough film talking bad about people. Let's be optimistic and let's, let's roll with this. Right? That's how I look at it. Let's roll with it. Damn. Kevin Williams with a new attitude, man. Yeah, man. You gotta, you gotta have a new attitude. With a new attitude. God said, behold, I make all things new. So what do you think? I ain't gonna be made new too? Listen. I'm part of the kingdom. Okay. I see, I think I should be made too. New okay. Too. Why what's wrong with you? You standing on that long line of doubters? What is what's going on? Come on, man. Yeah. I'm going by I'm, I'm going with, with, you know, with past records. He having 24 points. And nine rebounds and five assists in 46 games for they do for the dude hurt him. Let's rewind the tape I'm without editing. Truth, Let's yeah, rewind the tape without editing. Let me if Mikhail Bridges battle tested when we come talking about postseason. I haven't seen Mikhail Bridges. Okay, that's what you said before. All right. Making sure I still got the same Kevin Williams. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell is Jalen Brunson battle tested when we speak of that a postseason? Of course he is. Okay. He's our leader. Okay. All right. Skipper. The captain hat. I got you. Is Denver the leader? Is Denver Chizzo battle tested when we speak of postseason? I see it. Okay. I this is the Kevin it. Williams I know. Right. Is Josh Hart battle tested? Hell the fuck yeah. And they broke his ribs and shit because he out there rebounding like a miniature Dennis Rodman. Hell the fuck yeah. Here comes the million dollar question. All right. Rewind. Julius is Julius Randle battle tested? Okay. How is he when you have it 25 in the playoffs? You have it. He didn't even get into the playoffs, so I can't say what what happened. I believe that if he was playing like how he was playing, he would have did all right in the playoffs because so, he was bully balling, nigga. Okay. And so that's made for the playoffs. So so so, so I so. need him to do the same thing. Hopefully, stupid Thibodeau will take him out and then get him ready for the playoffs, and then we'll see. Because so, if I got a healthy Julius Randle in the playoffs, that's another thing. Let's be real. Julius Randle, when he played in the playoffs in his first year, he had like a like a foot injury or something. He was injured both times they came in the playoffs. How you doing, my brother? God bless right. you guys. So if he's not battle-tested mm -hmm. for the postseason, once again, let me see if this is a zipper somewhere on this motherfucking shirt, I'm man. I'm being hopeful. How can you I say this say brother is going to be the main factor for us to get to the Western Conference? Because we need him. We need a player who's not battle tested. And we don't. Okay, listen. Composed. All right, let me let me let me give it to you like that. 
Welcome back to Real Talk no, with no, Nick, no, by the no, way. Because I want you to understand where I'm coming from, so that way you will know where I'm at. Okay. The only person I think that could replace him and get us where I want to get is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now, how we get him is probably the Knicks. We get rid of him. We get rid of Julia. The Knicks ain't gonna give. The Knicks ain't gonna give up them picks. Okay, and they're gonna have to give up dues, and they're gonna have to give up some shit. Man, that's too much, man. Right, they're gonna have to give up some shit for him. So now, knowing that, keep him. Now, okay, I'll say, okay, let's get rid of him and send him to Indiana for Miles Turner. I want a straight up deal. I want a straight up trade. I want a straight up trade for him. I want a straight up deal. I would trade him for Zion Williams. Oh, I okay. hear that name in a minute. I would trade him for him, but like that's I a said, risk too. There's some risk involved in all of them. The only solid one is Giannis at the Cooper, but we're gonna have to give up more than what we get to get him. So now there's a problem. So now looking at it like that, let's see how we looking at it. Keep this nigga and just hope and pray this nigga play well enough to play in the playoff. Because if he plays well in the playoff, guess what? We're going to the fucking championship. All right, so let's pray together, man. Give me a hand. Let's let's bow down. Look, 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 put your head down. We're going to pray together. Dear Lord. Father God, can we please, as we approach this new Knicks season, pray. We pray as Knicks fans that Julius Randle will come in with the right frame of mind. They have the right attitude. He'll think of his teammates. And he'll play the game of basketball that we all know he has the potential to play. Amen. God, make sure he has the spirit to win, win, win. Because winning ain't everything. It's the only damn thing. And, Julius, you better take that attitude. Okay? Because we got to win. And only winning, you got to have the ball in Jalen Brunson's hands. And, Julius, you got to bully ball people like you did last year. Look, look, we just did a Nick prayer, man. Yeah, just turn it like it is. You know, we did a Nick prayer for my boy Julius, man. Yeah, hope. That's what it is. Prayer now. Hope. Now. This boy don't show up. This motherfucker sees. I'll be just as mad as you. Okay? You don't fucking show up. I would be just as mad as you, but now I'm looking. We pray for the motherfucker. I had enough time. We just pray, man. Yeah, well, you know, God is is in charge of all of that. Come on, man. You know, like, we can pray for him, but I think Julius should pray for himself. What you think? Absolutely. Okay, because, you know, he got a direct line. You know, God, look, help me. No, I think Julius is humble enough to do that. You know, listening to him, hearing how everybody on the team like him. Uh, as far as the locker room guy, he's a good dude. Because if so that boy be cries one, that little boy cry one more time. I'm, God not, damn I'm it. not crying, I'm telling the truth. No, I'm talking about that little boy. He's telling the truth. If that little boy's in the stands, watching his pops play, and he start that motherfucker crying, so man. man like, I, the I don't know. thing that I thought Julius did was not come back. Because them stupid motherfuckers, stupid, excuse me, those stupid people. He's trying to get him to come back. And he shouldn't have came. You know, he should, should have stayed out. So I was happy that he made that decision not to put himself out there again and put himself in another bad situation. Now, he had time to heal. And, no, we're going to come back. I think that he's going to do good. Okay. That's my opinion. Next question, man. Yes, sir. I know we all want to go for the boss to self this next. But there's other teams, too. You got to watch out for Philly. Okay, it's gonna be a problem. Indiana again. You know, it's not gonna be easy. But I want Boston as a as, as like we gotta beat the shit out of them to put everybody else on note. We're gonna struggle with Philly. You know, I know we're gonna be all right, you know, but we gotta get a center that could guard this dude and beat, man. I think that's our problem, the center. Yeah, with with Philly. And you know, with Jalen Brunson a healthy and beat, taking a hundred and thirteen million off the table. That's thirty three thousand. No, thirty three million so somebody we should each year. So Jalen Brunson's paying for a center. Whether yeah. you look at it like that or Jaylen not. Jalen Durant. Huh? Jalen Durant from Detroit. That's our center. From what I read. That's who uh J- Jalen Brunson money's gonna pay for? Jalen Durant from Detroit. You ever seen him play? Dude, if we get him, that's our that's well, so what he got that Mitch don't have? Uh, the ability not to get hurt. He's more durable, stronger too. So he don't get hurt. So you know, like yo, is he, he as dominant as Mitch? Nobody dominates like Mitch. But I'm just saying he yeah, he can he can dominate. 
he can start and Mitch can back him up and we'll be formidable because he finishes around the rim like Nick. Okay. Do you think Nick fans is... is, is, is guess is, what? We could have drafted him. Oh. Remember the number we were talking about that? Either him or A.J. Green. Jay okay, Green. I remember now. Now, now, it's, now it's, you remember that, right? It's hitting, it's hitting me. Matter of fact, we were... It was right, right down the block. the block. Talking about that. That's like two summers ago. Right. We could have had him. So now you getting him now. See? So, like I said... I, you know, I'm. You know, even though I smoke weed, I do remember what I say. Oh, and by the way, that was uh, some blue cookies. Blue cookies. Oh yeah, it has an opiate effect. It makes you say "fuck everybody." That's what it does. Damn. Damn, man. <laughs> So we got my boy Kevin Williams back on Real Talk with Nick. Surprisingly, my man is optimistic with Julius Randle. We even yeah. did a prayer for Julius yeah. Randle. We did a Nick prayer, man. May God help that man. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, surprisingly, my man Kevin Williams is saying that the New York Knicks is not getting the calls from the rest because of James Dolan. Yeah. That was an eye opener. That was very surprising. Man. You didn't think so. I never heard you say that, man. We did a lot of interviews. First of all, I never heard you say this. I respect your. You don't think uh, Tom Thibodeau get calls from the refs? How he get his team to the uh, Eastern Conference Finals with Derrick Rose? It's not that. It's not that. I'm telling you, the, the Knicks. They don't like the Knicks ownership, man. I'm telling you, they've been. They've been. Don't okay, like I, that. I heard that about other players not wanting to come here because of, of because of James Dolan. Right. So but I they, never. I thought I hear someone yeah, say. Players is saying that don't they have a players union? So now if the players are sitting as a group collectively sitting. So you think like, Chris Paul is going around because he was in charge of that? He knows about it. Okay, you think Chris Paul is going to the ref saying, "Listen, when we play the Knicks, no, blow the whistle because of James like Dolan." That doesn't, it doesn't listen. The referees is a notorious, nefarious group that answers to nobody. So hey, Chris Paul ain't saying shit to them. Okay, let's be real about that. What I'm saying is when the players that have been affected by the Knicks, ownership, coach, and all that have sat down and said, listen, when you go there, these niggas play these games, da 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 So now when you hear that as a collective players union, that reflects on the owners and the union, players union, talks to the owners who collectively says this nigga's an asshole. Okay. James Dolan is a is like a, a overlord owner. That's why he he goes outside the norm. He done went outside and built him a new whole sports complex in Las Vegas. And he owned or got part ownership with Mr. Davis' son with the Las Vegas team out there because they're playing at his complex. Okay. Let me ask you this. If the Knicks was to so happen get a chip this upcoming season, would the public concerning the Knicks management have a different perspective when we speak it out of James Dolan? Will all be forgiven, man? I'm not. Listen, if Julius Randle plays well, this all... This is business, man. We don't, you know, like, you know, like, that, that's political what you're saying. This is business. Man. Business is business. If, it, if you take care, if you take care of the chip, you're still a piece of, you still, you still whatever you are. I don't want to say it, but you still that. But, you know, as far as our players that we cheer for and root for, that kind of takes away from that, you know, from the evil stuff they do. Because we win, and everybody loves a winner. You know that. But you see, when we lose, did anybody know we, we came in second place last year? Okay. You see how this regular season don't really count for nothing? Okay. Because if we would have fucking went to the championship, we would have been bragging about us coming in second place in the fucking East. Because, you know, as a Knicks fan, yeah. I don't want to see the New York Knicks entering the season with an identity crisis. Uh, they need to know who the fuck they are. Knicks know who they are? Yeah, 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 yeah. None of that. Okay. We got a great leader. We got the golden okay. child. Didn't I tell you that evil has beset him on all sides? And he be fucking evil up there. I want to be Camilla Harris. Well, you know, one minute I, I'm Hispanic, I, I'm black, one minute I'm Asian. No, 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 we're not confused. Uh, 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 you know, I, I want us to and know who the fuck we are. I, I, I don't want to hear the not, bullshit how we cooking collard greens in a bathtub. We're not chamillion. We, 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 we're not doing the... We don't flip. 
we clean collard we, greens in the let bathtub. Me explain something to you, Camilla. We too dark to say we what we are. This is what we are. You know, because you know, Camilla, you know, no, no, she think you make collard greens with bacon. You put bacon in the collard greens. Think you make collard greens with curry sauce? <laughs> <laughs> you know. I want us to know who the That's fuck we Indian are. That's an Indian woman who worshipped that Shiva statue. She's an idolater who worships, who marries gay couples. And she doesn't say husband and wife. She says spouses for life. And that's the truth about her. This is a sports program. I don't like talking about counterfeit people. So let's leave Camilla for November where she gets the L stamped on her fake ass. Okay? So there we go. I'm all for that, man. I'm voting for Trump. I'm, I'm all Shit, for that, man. That. I can't vote for nobody who's out here trying to abort Nick Babies. Future Nick Babies. Yeah. You feel me? Don't Future no Nick respect. Babies. Don't have no respect for black men either. At all. None. So. And came out and said she wasn't going to do nothing for black people, specifically. So you know she don't give two no, fucks about Nick fans. Us, it, it doesn't benefit everyone. I'm not going to do nothing for black people. Oh, no. So, no, if it doesn't benefit only black people, Camilla, because black people are not immigrants. Foundational black people are not immigrants. Let's just explain that. They came in the halls of slave ships, uh, Miss Camilla. And most of you immigrants wouldn't want to get on our boat. Okay. Let's just make that a fact. Okay, so we're not immigrants. We're American slave Holocaust survivors. And we ain't playing victim. We just telling it like it is. You could try to change the narrative, but that don't change your predicament. You understand? There's a price you pay for what you've done. You're paying it right now. Would you eat collard greens, man, if you knew it was cleaned in someone's bathtub? Man? I don't eat collard greens. But let's say you just did. I definitely wouldn't eat them if Miss Camilla was bathing in them. That's like sweat rights. <laughs> <laughs> eat your collard greens if you don't put your little nasty behind in there. Are you serious? That's a filthy woman there. I don't care what nobody say. Anybody that has the wherewithal to stand before God and marry two women and, and think you justified is an abomination to me, man. Because God sees everything and knows and hears everything we do. Contrary to you agnostic disbelievers, I believe in God. So, you know, that's just me. Listen, we have 52 minutes, man. I'm trying to get eight minutes in, man. I got to get an hour strong with Kevin Williams, man. Well, you can get it's minutes. been a while, y'all. You can talk about whatever you want. It's been a while, man. It's been a while. I'm glad to have my brother back, man. I understand. I hope y'all miss me, but it's going to get fun because this year we're going to have a lot of fun. Knicks are going to be winning, you know. And, well, we know, speak oh, about the Knicks winning, not to cut you off. How many more wins do you think we're going to add to the winning column than that of last season? We won, like, how many games? Like 50, 52? I think we, we can win 61 games. Honestly, we're that good. You know, if we don't put the right pieces together, I think we can win 60. And when they eat. That's my honest opinion. I'm being honest because we once we got Mikel Bridges, and you know, like, even though I always thought if we get Jalen, Jalen Durman or even Blake Lively, that would that would take us over the hump as far as filling those gaps. But the Knicks, they got, you know, hey, listen, I'm not the only person that see those. They got they got People that know that that's probably a glaring thing they gotta they gotta address. Okay. So I hope they see it. Any predictions concerning the NBA? Western or Eastern as far as being when we speak of that globally, is it's gonna be the powerhouse. You know, the well, West the West is always gonna be good, man. So, you know, I'm just happy we contended in the East. That's just, that's just so some say the eastern, conf the east side of the NBA is starting to be a running gun. We're, They're starting we're to run the gun. We're adjusting to how to win against running gun. The east is physical, so the playoffs is geared to the east. The problem is you got great scorers in the west. So you know, I think that what the Knicks did, we should be able because we can shoot man and we can run. So we're geared for the west. And we play physical, so we, we give for the East. So the Knicks is good enough to win it all. I, I, that's my opinion. All right. If the Knicks was to win it all, how would New York City act, man? 
Where, where, where businesses think, be looted? I don't, yeah, I don't think New York would know how to act, man. But do you think I cars just, would yeah, be uh, wrecked? Hey, yo, we do, man. We do, man. I'm so asking I, you for the reaction. Do you think shit would be tore the fuck up? Do you think it would be like a Rodney King I scene no, out in L.A.? Where, I, where, would where, to, I would have to. Where we would start attacking people with I would have to Boston caps and shit. To happen. Huh? For it to happen. Would beatdowns be held out, man, if, if the Knicks was to win and you was to be... shit in New York, the, the NYPD would start shit on up. That I do know. So I don't think that looting and all that. They'll have uh, precautionary tactics for that when we have our parade. Okay, so that's... You know, and that's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. Now, this is how we're going to close this out, man. Yes, sir. I know you heard about Carmelo Anthony recently publicized, making a statement. It was publicized, it was publicized, excuse me, that he said the New York Knicks offered him a position coming off the bench. And he didn't take it. He shot it down. Because he didn't want to play that Jarek Rat, Jarek Jack role, where he get garbage time just coming off the bench, two minutes left on the clock on the clock. Do you think his ego got in the way, man? Or oh, respectfully so, that's mellow, man. Well, mellow can answer it you know, better than me. What's your perception? My 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 perception is I just think that he wouldn't accept that. You know, uh, Mello's a great basketball player. I wouldn't say it was his ego. I would say it was his common sense to realize that he might have just give me a coach in position. You know? As opposed to me just having a thing and not playing, and then when you put me out there, you know, it's people just clapping and all that. Melo deserved better than that, so you know, I'm glad he retired. So you, you you saying he shouldn't have took that? I'm glad he turned it down. Okay, but when we had a situation with Julius Randle, when he got injured, couldn't that garbage time been extended? Where he could have? Think I don't think the Knicks would have gave him that starting role. I think they would have got a younger player, and uh, they would have, they would have, they wouldn't have did. That's just the way they are, Nick. They wouldn't go with an old 16, 18 year veteran to start. They're not doing that. They just wouldn't. And I know that for a fact. Damn. Truth be told. Truth be told. Listen, I need to say that. I woke up this morning, right, and I saw Miss. To see no Whitlow. Listen, I don't know what's up. I heard you taking, but listen, that should not stop you from calling me. You know, for real. Listen, Miss Whitlow, give me a call. I, you know, we need to talk about how you gonna be my girl. You met her? I'm, I'm trying to meet her. Are you putting your I best? I meet her every morning when I get up. But are you putting your best, your nah, best foot forward? Really I haven't really stepped my game up, you know. But listen, I got a little bit of time on my side. Is she a Knicks fan? I don't know, but we gonna find out. You got these are things you gotta find out. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm working on it, man. Is she subscribed to Real Talk with Nick? I, I, listen, I don't even know if she subscribed to Channel Seven. I don't know nothing. You know, I'm trying to. You know, she's ignoring me at this point. You know. Are you infatuated with the television set, my brother? No. Is the TV know, screen coming listen, between you and this? This? this let me say this. This? Do you ever know? Like you know, like this girl right here. I like her style and everything, man. And you want to get to know her because that I think knowing her can make me a better person. And, 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 and she's Channel Seven, right? She was Channel Five. Channel Five. Yeah. I keep my TV stuck on Channel Five. Like you know, I don't really watch TV till about four thirty. Yeah. I'm a fan, for real. No <laughs> lie. Damn. How y'all brothers doing, man? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. These are my people right here. Yeah. Gio, my man. God yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? What's up? I'm sorry I didn't go with y'all. But after I do this interview, I'm going to get it in. Yes, I'm going to get it in. That's the man right there, I see man. y'all guys. I'll be like, see, I gotta get, I gotta get like, like my brothers. You see them dudes yeah, and yeah. Yeah. The gorilla unit, boy. Those are my people right there. All right. And do you know what's funny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry I didn't go with y'all. But after I do this interview, I'm going to get it in. All right. And then, of course, you got real talk with Nick. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna do me like that, but god damn it. Huh? I bring the legends to life, baby.
We out here, baby. We out here. God damn it. And I know it's just a cell phone, but this shit gets heavy after a while. Hey, yo, when you keep trying to hold this shit. In a, in a, yeah, we out here, man. Mr. Sheena Willow, we out here. Yo, and, and, and let me let my, my viewers know, right? Because, you know, I don't ask for nothing from my players. When we speak out of the next, I wouldn't do for myself. So, so you can you come over here just for a minute and hold this? I just want to let them know something. Sure. Just hold it just like that. Steady, steady. Steady like no no no, 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 I got it. Like, like, like that, just yeah, like okay, that. Okay, okay, hold on. Just like that. It comes. This this comes with skill, baby. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, 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 I want you. Look at this shit. It's fucking all 